Hi Sagittarius, it's Power Light Tarot coming at you with the reading and today we have another great reading we do you guys and uh, uh, yeah I hope you guys are well and uh, we have jealousy in this reading and so you you could be saying well that doesn't sound great right no it doesn't but we have potential gateway and this does sound great and uh, with this tree here it's kind of like looks like the tree of life a little bit um, we have this kind of hole in the tree and, you know, they have those sometimes, right? And so, but the hole in the tree is, you know, shaped like a heart. There is a river underneath and it's almost like the, you know, uh, the river to love. <coughs> and uh, underneath that, this is a, a deck of fairies, right? I have a couple of these, but there's a whole bunch of like unicorns and mini waterfalls and, uh, Pegasus type of horses. There's a couple over here. Uh, mm -hmm. And so there's just all this kind of prettiness here. There's a fairy here. And so this potential gateway is like an offer to you, Sagittarius, I believe, uh, if you want it, right? So today, of course, we're going to put the tarot down. We're going to shuffle and put that down very spontaneously uh, because, right? But, you know, I, I, I usually like to put the the oracles down first, uh, but we have potential gateway and we have kindness here, compassion. Uh, and then we have the call of the night. So the call of the night is no, it's not, uh, what do they call that call of, I don't know. Jack London wrote that book, the call of, I don't know, the night of the call. I don't remember, but this is, there is a wolf here. There definitely is. Uh, cause I think his, uh, book was about, I never read it, but I heard it was great, right? So here is the uh, the wolf, okay, getting back to the reading, right? And so here's a little vampire, and she's sitting here dressed to go out, real cute. And uh, here is the moon outside, the full moon, which is really interesting because we just had a full moon Monday. So today is Thursday, and so that means that uh, it probably still looks full. It is waning a little bit, right? Uh, but we are in the, we are in the energy of the full moon, which is, you know, and there's an eclipse, there was an eclipse. So now we're running into another one, not running, uh, but we are approaching another, this will be a solar eclipse, right? But here the call of the night, uh, and this is the moon. So she's very emotional with the full moon, right? Because that's what the full moon does, uh, the moon in general, right? But especially full moons, because full moons are endings and new beginnings, and we have this uh, kind of jealousy. I feel like somebody's jealous of your new beginning. But before we begin, Sagittarius, if you would like your own psychic reading, you may always get one. They're lots of fun. And we do them on the phone. I'm accurate. I'm a silver grad. So I can say that uh, with, you know, confidence. Yeah. And feedback, right? I always get feedback. But um, we do the tarot spread at the end. So you have two different unique insights and I have tarot spreads, tarot readings, if you would like one of those. And if you want a free five minute psychic reading with mystic sense, uh, that link is below too. So let's see what we have for you guys, Sagittarius. Uh, we start with potential gateway and we have vulnerability. So this potential gateway is, as I described it, it is a, you know, a new beginning. It's to love for sure. It is. And we have vulnerability though. It's possible that somebody is coming here. Uh, and the call of the night, it kind of got off subject here. This is about an adventure. This is about a date. Yeah. This is like you waiting here for this person to show up for you. And so this is daring, adventure, and excitement. So I'm not sure what's daring about this, but there could be something daring where somebody dared themselves to walk away from something possibly because she carries the dead body here, right? Hope I don't get in trouble for that, right? This naked body here. Uh, you can't really see any body parts though. No, you can't. <laughs> and so, uh, no, it's a man. Is it a man? Yeah, it's a man. Uh, so let's cover that just a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and cover it like this. And so this woman here, she's not a woman. She's a vampire. She's a female vampire, right? And uh, this is the compassionate card, empathy, sim simpatico, and kindness. Uh, but this is about somebody who, like, I believe ends something with somebody. And they are trying to be compassionate with them because they are changing course. Yeah. 
And here's the changing course is on the jealousy card. Somebody's jealous because somebody is changing course to be with you, Sagittarius. There's not really another way to see this. I mean, there could be, but like, uh, there could, there could be like, you know, tweaking versions of it. Right. And, you know, or kind of, you know, similar, of course, that's how tarot is, especially in a general reading. Right. So she's carrying this dead body and it does say, uh, it does say empathy and kindness. And, you know, because that person, she's basically carrying, they're already dead. Like this is an ending, right? And here's a jealousy card, envy, punishment, and changing course. So somebody's very envious here about an ending because she sits here sad. Uh, and here are all the skulls here because she's sad about an ending. Yeah, she is. And, uh, mm -hmm. and then we have the call of the night. And this is what somebody wants with you. They want, they want to call on you. If you guys have ever heard that, that's the way they used to, uh, I'm a come a courting, right? Yeah. And so, uh, it's really kind of a classy way to say that somebody was <clears throat> coming for a date, right? It was, it was a classy way, uh, because it used to be more formal and more classy. Yeah, it did. It was, I mean, it doesn't mean it can't be today, but <clears throat> in general, right? more formal and the call of the night and she's sitting here and these kitties are here with her. Yeah, they're kitties. And when I say kitties, it, for me, this is like a new beginning because it's like a baby, right? When you see the youth here, it's like a new beginning, the youth, right? The youth, right? <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> this looks like the mother kitten, the mother, uh, cat over here. And the wolf is here again. Uh, how many wolves are there here? Is there other wolves here? Uh, no, it's the only wolf. And so the wolf here is a great calling. So somebody's ca the call of the night, somebody's coming for a date and they consider this to be a great calling, uh, or an expansion because that's exactly what wolves are about here. Unless your person looks like, uh, Wolfman Jack. Do you guys know who Wolfman Jack is? Right. I think he passed away, but he used to be a DJ. Right. And yeah. Uh, and he had a great DJ voice. He did. I like, uh, when people have, you know, kind of great voices and they're a DJ. Let's see what we have. They should, right? They definitely should. And if they don't, time to step down. See what we got, you guys. I'm just teasing. <laughs> Let's see what we have from this deck for Sagittarius. And we have the false person. That's interesting because it came out, um, I don't know, in the other day's reading or something like that. It could have been Capricorn. Let's see what else we have. Capricorn's reading. But in this reading, we have the message of concern. Yeah, this is, you know, this false person, uh, looks like in this reading, somebody's no longer being false to themselves or maybe false to somebody else because somebody here steps through a gateway because they're being true to themselves. Yeah, I feel like they are. And somebody else is kind of getting the boot here. Yeah, they are Sagittarius. And, uh, you know, I don't feel like it's you, uh, but this looks like third party energy to me. It does on some level. Uh, maybe this person is no longer being false with you. Uh, but it looks like, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's really interesting how the false person in the upright is a number eight. In other words, somebody was being false to kind of give themselves power because the eight is a power number. Yeah, it is. Right. I always used to say I'm an eight, right? I'm not a 10 Sagittarius. You guys ever, you know, right. If you've seen me, <laughs> That's funny a little bit, right? I've been a little tired on camera, so don't, don't look at the latest ones, right? But, uh, you know, this is, it's an eight, but in the reverse, it's kind of like, I'm not being false anymore in order to make myself feel good. I just feel like somebody here was being fake here with themselves or something, or trying to have power by being fake. And they're no longer doing that. And the message of concern Sagittarius is uh, here. And this lady is, she's not looking at a happy, a happy message. No, that's why she's kind of grabbing her heart. Right. It's like when something, you know, comes to you and your stomach drops, right. Something bad or something kind of scary or, or something you're not, you know, your emotions are not kind of dealing with it well, right. Okay. Your stomach drops a little bit, or you feel that little kind of pain sort of. And so this message of concern though, she's doing that. And, um, you know, this is 14. It's a number five. This is about terrible change for her. It is because the fives are challenging. Yeah, they are all the, uh, you know, usually the cards that are, uh, like odd 
right? In the destiny reports, in numerology, of course, which is, you know, really based on that. But those are challenging, right? Yeah. And I, you know, I've got number three. I was born with a th as a three. I'm like, what? How can they do that to me, right? But, uh, you know, and so this is challenging change for somebody that they don't like. We'll get one more card for Sagittarius. And now we have the scythe. It's reversed. OMG, right? This came out the other day. Somebody's already been kind of cut out here. It does look like that. I mean, look at the scythe, you guys, right? Unless you're over there cutting, cutting sugar cane in the backyard, Sagittarius. Are you doing that? Yeah, I don't think so, right? Hopefully you have a garden, though. Yeah, I mean, that'd be great, right? I know I want to get one so I can have my own little organic food. Yeah. But, you know, this this is uh, honestly the Knight of Pentacles reversed. I find that to be interesting in this deck. Uh, it's also a number 10. So something's been cut out already because it's a completion. Yeah, it is. This is uh, interesting, but kind of, for me, very clear. This is a very, yeah. So let's get into... Uh, the spontaneous part of the reading, Sagittarius, and you know, maybe you're saying I've been waiting for that, right? I'm not sure if you have or not, uh, but let's see. Let me grab this over here. Beg your pardon here because I'm still kind of getting acclimated with this one deck and I do really like it because it's a tarot deck uh, based based on the, uh, the traditional deck, uh, you know, the one that everybody uses uh, by... I don't know her name, Ritter Waite, Ritter Waite, yeah, but uh, anyway, I think Pamela Coleman was part of, part of that, but uh, long story short, it's very close, but it is different, so I really like it, right, yeah, instead of the same-o, 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 right, yeah, let's see what we got, mm -hmm. yeah, I only like same-o, same-o Sagittarius when it, when it, like, suits me, right, other than that, uh, yeah, I want change, right? <laughs> if we have justice here, mm -hmm. really interesting. And uh, the Knight of Pentacles is reversed. This is the Knight of Pentacles reversed. They call it the Jack of uh, Pentacles. I mean, uh, diamonds. The diamonds are always money or pentacles. So there could be possibly, or, or maybe you have a lot of that in your chart. Let's see what we have today. And, uh, mm-hmm. So we have Queen of Pentacles showing up here, the tower. Something ends here. The mindset is here is to just end something, just a boom, right? To kind of blow it up and end it. And these people are falling out. But interesting here with this tower, they're flying. She has a rose in her hand, so she wants to go. So here, this uh, in this reading, Sagittarius, we have this tower with the uh, you know, with the lightning that is, you know, kind of blowing this, you know, pu putting the tower on fire. So they have to leave, right? And the dove is here, right? Instead of the, you know, bats in the belfry type of thing, right? Or, you know, vultures or whatever. And so the, the dove is here. The dove is here with hope and peace and love. And they fall out and they go, it's time to go. It's fine. I'm, I'm going to find love. She has the rose and he's flying like Superman. And so, right, with power. But usually they're falling out to their death. No, these people are flying away. So this is great. And that's what somebody's doing. Something's Somebody's ending something that was not letting them fly or not restricting their, their, like, their growth. Something like that. Yeah. Or restricting their happiness for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Somebody lets go of something here. And whoever's doing that feels very vulnerable. And we see... Uh, we see the fairy here, Sagittarius, and, you know, she's a child, right, which is very beautiful, and this is uh, 34, number 7, and this is all about contemplation, and in that introspection or analysis, like, you know, assessing, uh, assessing something comes the vulnerability, so this is, it can be like worry, kind of, but I feel vulnerable, but this, in this reading, somebody felt like they had to jump out of the tower and fly, because they didn't want to stay wherever they were. No. And they were lying to themselves with the false person reversed. Yeah. It was just taking away their power with the number eight in the reverse. Yeah. So queen of cups shows up here, right? And, uh, mm -hmm. she's, uh, she's, she's real pretty over here. She is. And, uh, yeah, 
but uh interesting because you know she's kind of a blonde just like the queen of pentacles <laughs> i find that interesting but you know this is a celtic deck so anyway uh we start here sagittarius nine of wands nine of wands reversed and uh this nine of wands reversed is uh Mm -hmm. this is kind of a trip we're going to look at that in a minute but in the reading we do have the page of wands and that sits in the environment right and this is always about a new path a new direction he's offering the emerald here it's like it's giant maybe it's a green crystal but uh an emerald is about uh kind of fertility because it's green yeah it can be so that's really interesting right uh, the Ace of Pentacles sits here and the Ace of Swords sits here. So we see the beauty and the excitement in this reading. I have to say that. Yeah, we do. We see that. And Nine of Wands reversed. I want to have a look at that, if you don't mind, you guys. As I said, I'm getting acclimated here. Right? Thanks for allowing that. Right? Let's see what we have uh, with the Wands. Nine of Wands reversed. Lack of initiative and application. Okay, let's find that to be really interesting. Is that the nine or the eight? That is the nine. Yeah, okay. So we have here the, uh, the seven of swords here, but this is a good seven of swords because they're playing the music here and they're both happy. She has the harp, some kind of beautiful harp here. I feel like harps are... Those are what angels play, right? Yeah, they are. And so, uh, you know, yeah, I'd love to have a harp. Wouldn't know how to play it though, but hey. And then we have these other, he's playing some type of, you know, old type of kind of uh, horns. They had double horns here, whatever that is. Maybe it's a Celtic horn, not sure. But the two swords here are in upside down into the black cloud. But this is a kind of a happy card. Let's look at the seven of swords uh, and see, and that is the challenge, right? Uh, in this deck and we have things may not have worked out the way you planned. Maintain your inner harmony. There are many paths to personal freedom. Okay. This tower gives somebody their freedom. It does. They're flying away and they're happy. They're like, I'm glad I'm out of there, but it happens very, I think it was planned, but then it happens like really quick. So these swords can always imply a plan because this is kind of a, I like to call the swords Mercury, right? Like a Mercury based when we talk about planets, right? And uh, we're coming into Mercury retrograde. We are, but we're not there yet. Uh, we're in the shadow, but hey, but this seven of swords, uh, this is right. We talk about somebody wants their freedom. It sits in the challenge and over here is lack of initiative because somebody felt really challenged here. And they were being compassionate to somebody else that they let go. We have compassion, empathy, and kindness. And remember, she carried away the dead man, right? And, you know, she says, I'm not going to bother to suck his blood because she's a vampire, vampirus, vampira, vampirette. I don't know what you want to call her, right? Yeah, I'm not sure. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> and so the vulnerability card is showing this here. Uh, where the little fairy sleeps on the leaf and she has to go to sleep here because she feels emotionally down on some level about whatever she is thinking about the number seven is here, right? Reduced, right? So somebody got their freedom here and it challenged them and here's the queen of pentacles. So maybe it's Virgo, Taurus, or Capricorn. It may be, it may be anybody could be anybody who resonates with this reading. That's how it is because these are general readings and, uh, you know, it's not a birth chart where it's, you know, only yours, right? Or even a private. Yeah. So this could be for anybody. So if you're listening and you're a Scorpio or you're, you're whoever or whomever I should say, then, Hey, if, if this resonates with you, then right on, right? Claim it. Okay. So the Ace of Pentacles sits in the past and here's a little angel thinking all about this brand new offer about this new beginning because she sits here on the, uh, she's perched here on the pentacle, which is up in the air and the little angel. And she's thinking, you can tell, and below are the roses, but we see the, the thorns. We see the little, uh, yeah, thorns. Is there another way for that? I don't think so. Uh, 
I was going to say spikes, right? That sounds like that's the wrong word. <laughs> it is. Uh, but uh, let's see. Let's get a card on the Queen of Pentacles. And this is in the root. And, you know, uh, but, you know, when we see the Queen of Pentacles here with the Ace of Pentacles, somebody is offering something stable. Yeah. And this is kind of a nurturing energy with the Queen of Pentacles. Uh, very fertile. I want to offer something that can grow because here are all the plants and the flowers. You got grapes and apples and roses, tulips, right? Beautiful tulips for this, for the spring. Uh, but you know, uh, nine of wands reversed now. So here's the nine of wands twice reversed. This is somebody who gave up on something over here. It means a lack of initiative. So we have somebody who gave up on something and they're feeling vulnerable. They are. And in the past, they knew they wanted this ace of pentacles with you. And here sits the two of swords. And this is really interesting here. It's not the woman who always sits and kind of has a sword, two swords and she's wearing a blindfold. No, it's these two men and they are, he has the drum and they're both in this kind of, uh, reflection. And this is about, well, kind of, uh, it's kind of about just being hopeful about something that might've been a stalemate or maybe a problem on your mind or something, some type of challenge. Uh, could have been right. Two of swords, uh, in the deck. You don't know what to do. Choice is six of one. No, that doesn't make any sense. Where is that? You don't know what to do. Yeah. Choice is six of one. Okay. So in other words, uh, interesting. So six of one is very interesting right now. Half a dozen of another. Okay. So they're saying there's choices here and they're kind of difficult, uh, yeah, that's kind of a trip to me. Six of one, half a dozen of another. Haven't heard that one. Uh, but it's basically saying somebody had a choice and it kind of was difficult, right? Grasp your sword of individuality and march to the beat of your own drum. So he has a drum and that's what somebody does here. Somebody's being true to themselves with the false person reversed. And they're being true to themselves about who they're in love with. That's what this reading is. Yeah, it's very cool. Uh, it's very cool because it brings back somebody's authenticity and with authenticity is power is power, right? So, you know, everybody needs personal power, right? Of course, that's what we all right? You know, your chart, if you get your chart, it can show you how to kind of your natal chart can definitely show you, uh, you know, decisions that you'll be making. Uh, it does, uh, with the oppositions and, uh, things that are going to happen in your life that, you, you'll just take action on because that's your natal chart. Uh, but that's what astrology is. It's to help you live a better life with kind of what, you know, with what you were born with. Basically it really is, uh, right. Cause it shows your strengths and your vulnerabilities. And then you are able to go from there with that awareness. Yeah. It is awesome. Uh, especially if you get a predictive chart. Yeah. So here's this guy. I'm going to dance to the beat of my own drum. The Ace of Swords is here. If you guys want to get a chart, you can. Ace of Swords is right here. And here's the baby, another baby, right? This is the, the, the black haired baby. Uh, you know, they're all cute. They're babies, right? So they're angels for sure, not just babies. And all babies are angels, right? Yeah. Yeah. My little granddaughter, she's two and she's two in a few months. And I heard her the other day going, I did it. I did it like 20 times. Right. <laughs> that was really cute though. Right. And so ace of swords here, uh, the angel holds onto the sword above it is the wreath of power or glory or nobility. Right. That is what that wreath is about. And so she holds, uh, here she holds the angel holds the sword and it is in the stone. This is power. And this is also a new beginning. This is what somebody is concerned with. And they made their mind up in the past because here's the ace of pentacles. Yeah, this person are, or you made up your mind, Sagittarius. <coughs> Beg your pardon, you guys. Yeah, maybe, maybe because the readings can be switched. And the ace of swords, the seeds of success and triumph are taking root. And remember, I just said there's like a, kind of this wreath of victory, right? Which is kind of fertile. The roots are taking, uh, the roots are take the, the success, the swords of success are taking root and it is in the stone. I feel like that is true about the sword and the stone. It talks about, <coughs> excuse me, success or power. And that's the concern here. 
I want success. I'm in love with Sagittarius or somebody else here, whoever resonates. I'm in love and I want that now. And somebody else is jealous here and uh, because of the changing course. Yeah, we have it right here with the, uh, with the vampire, right? And she's sad and all these skulls are with her because it speaks of an ending. In the environment sits the page of wands. It's a new direction. We have the six of pentacles here. Oh, I really like this card. And it's usually about give and take. <coughs> Sixes are about priorities. It's about recognizing. The sixes are really about recognizing what needs to be done or recognizing somebody for, you know, a soulmate, or it's just about recognizing. But, you know, this six of pentacles typically talks about give and take. I want something, uh, you know, I want to share. I want to uh, give. Sometimes it's charity, but, you know, this isn't really about charity, but it's about giving, right? It's about giving and sharing because, you know, usually we see that. Let's have a look. Let's see what they say. Six of Pentacles. And this is happy atmosphere. You are about to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Yeah. A vibrant personal cycle. So we see a new cycle here and we see a cycle ending with the tower. And the tower is always something that it's an ending or a powerful realization. And it is a powerful realization because it sits in the mindset or what's on, what's on the mind. So the queen of cups, Sagittarius sits in the out, out, uh, in the potential outcome. This is some type of playful love that you're going to have because the dolphin sits in the back. Yeah. And, uh, it's really interesting how he's kind of hooked to a string. I feel like it to be interesting. It's almost like she is commanding, uh, the fun here. Uh, with her, with her love for somebody. So she holds the cup. She sits in the water and the two roses are in front of her. These two roses are for two people, right? Sagittarius, you don't get both. All right. So, you know, stop, stop being that way, right? No. Queen of cups, sensitive lady who relies on her intuitive ability rather than on common sense. And when they say common sense, which intu intuition is common sense to me, but my point is that they're not trusting the rational mind like, Oh, so-and-so said it might not work out. Or, uh, my mother always told me to go after this type of lady or this man, or no, it's this, uh, I feel like me and Sagittarius or me and somebody, whoever this resonates with are connecting and are supposed to be together. Yeah. And it's interesting. This string is directing this dolphin. It's like my intuition is kind of controlling my life, not controlling, directing, directing, right? Yeah. We don't want to use the word control. And she has her book here, Sagittarius, and her book is about her intuition, right? She has all her little, uh, spells in there or, you know, uh, love hacks, whatever she has, but, uh, it's all good. It's also about her love, right? The queen of cups is always about love, creativity, and intuition, right? Yeah, it is. And so, you know, it's compassion for sure. Right. And we see compassion up here, but, uh, you know, she just carried away the dead person. So, uh, you right. So, you know, she's trying to be nice to somebody she just gave the ax to. That's what she's trying to do. And I feel like that's what somebody's doing in this reading. I feel like they ended it with somebody and they're trying to be kind to that person. So take whatever resonates here, Sagittarius. We're going to end the reading. Uh, you guys are great. Thank you so much for joining me here. Uh, please remember to like, share, and subscribe and, uh, you know, put your little notification bell. You might have to type me in because it's just, you know, it's just par for the course, uh, for some, right? Yeah. You guys rock. Thank you so much for joining me here and, uh, try to try to get through the eclipse. Uh, it'll be okay. Especially with this Aries eclipse coming. It's all about stepping into your personal power because Aries is about the self. Yeah. And we're going to have a new moon eclipse and I will talk about that in another video on my other channel. Thank you so much, you guys, for joining me here. Yeah, go check out my videos on the other channel. And uh, yeah, Divine Soul Astrology.